The SR-72 Dark Star, which is basically the next-gen SR-71 Blackbird, is set to completely change how we do aerial reconnaissance and possibly even precision strikes. The Blackbird was awesome, but it got retired because it was just too expensive to run and global threats were changing. But now, with all these localized conflicts and new dangers popping up, we really need to gather intelligence fast so high-speed aerial reconnaissance is back in the spotlight. Talk about the SR-72, also called the Son of Blackbird, started buzzing around 2007. We got some solid info in 2013 when Lockheed Martin's Skunk Works division spilled the beans to Aviation Week and Space Technology magazine. They talked about a 60-foot demonstrator, about the size of an F-22 Raptor, with a single engine that could hit Mach 6 for several minutes. They expected testing to kick off by 2018. The program got even more legit in 2017 with reports of a prototype flying with T-38 Talon jets at Plant 42 in Palmdale, which is Skunk Works' main stomping ground. A really key part of the SR-72 is its super advanced propulsion system. Since 2006, Lockheed Martin working with Aerojet Rocketdyne has been cooking up a cutting-edge turbine-based combined cycle TBCC power plant. This hybrid system blends a turbojet engine, which works great up to Mach 2.5 to 3, with a ramjet or scramjet which needs high speeds to kick in. This lets it fly efficiently from takeoff all the way to Mach 6. Lockheed considered using Pratt & Whitney F-100 and General Electric F-110 engines for the turbojet part, using a dual flow paths or over and under setup to get the best airflow for the scramjet. This innovative idea looked eerily similar to the fictional Dark Star aircraft in the 2022 movie Top Gun Maverick. Interestingly, Skunk Works engineers even helped develop the movie, which totally fueled speculation that the real-life SR-72 was about to make its big debut. The SR-72 Dark Star is getting a major upgrade, going beyond just being a spy plane. Digital transformation is a huge part of this, with Lockheed Martin's VP of Strategy, Jack O'Banion, mentioning in 2018 that cool new manufacturing techniques, like digital printing, would let them build engines with awesome built-in cooling systems. This innovation means the SR-72 can handle a ton of routine flights without breaking a sweat. The SR-72 really picked up steam during a global race for hypersonic weapons, after Russia announced its X-47M2 Kinjal missile and avant-garde hypersonic glide vehicle, HGV, in 2018, which felt like a potential threat to the U.S., Lockheed quietly pulled the SR-72 page from its website. This probably means the Pentagon decided to keep a lid on public info about these programs as the arms race heated up. Built from super advanced stuff like high-performance carbon, metal, and ceramic composites, the SR-72's body will be designed to handle the insane heat generated at speeds over Mach 5. Unlike its predecessor, the SR-71, the SR-72 might not look as distinctive because of these material requirements. Perhaps the biggest game-changer will be how much AI and autonomous systems are integrated. Skunk Works is seriously looking into an unmanned version of the SR-72, with a manned option still on the table. This means no need for special pilot safety gear at extreme speeds and altitudes, opening up tons of possibilities for recon and precision strikes without a human in the loop. The SR-72 is envisioned to become part of the U.S. Air Force and Navy's future ultimate system, working alongside next-gen air dominance fighters and B-21 Raider bombers. This ambitious program has sparked a lively debate within the Pentagon. With budget constraints, a critical question has popped up. Can the military really afford both these incredibly expensive superplanes? Some folks are arguing for a clear choice. Is the future all about the Dark Star's unmatched speed or the stealthy high-tech intelligence of the F-47? 
But what if that's the wrong question? What if the real game changer isn't choosing one over the other, but putting them together? What happens when you team up the fastest plane ever imagined with the stealthiest fighter ever built? You might just get the most unstoppable air dominance team the world has ever seen. So, let's break down the two superstars of this story. First, you've got the SR-72 Dark Star. We've talked about its legendary ancestor, the SR-71 Blackbird. The Dark Star takes that legacy and dials it up to 11. Its whole reason for being is one thing, speed. Pure, mind-bending, unadulterated speed. We're talking Mach 6, maybe more. Why does that matter so much? Well, think about modern air defenses, like Russia's S-400 and S-500 missile systems. They're incredibly advanced, with powerful radar and networked sensors designed to spot even stealthy aircraft. But they have a weakness. To shoot something down, they first have to get what's called a target track. Basically, their radar has to lock onto the target long enough to predict where it's going to be. But a plane moving at Mach 6? That's over 4,600 miles per hour. That makes it almost impossible. It screams from one radar's field of view to the next so fast that the system can't connect the dots. It's like trying to catch smoke with your bare hands. In terms of pure survival, a Mach 6 plane is probably safer than anything else in the sky, even a top-tier stealth fighter. Speed becomes its own kind of armor. Then you have the other player in this game, the Next Generation Air Dominance Fighter, or NGAD. We'll call it the F-47 for now. This isn't just an upgrade to today's jets, it's a whole new beast. Its main trick is an entirely new level of stealth. It's designed to be practically invisible to even the most advanced radar systems out there. But it's not just about being a ghost. The F-47 is expected to be a flying command center, networked with drones, satellites, and ground forces. It's going to have an open architecture, which is a fancy way of saying it can be upgraded with new software and weapons almost instantly. It's the brains of the operation, designed to outthink and outmaneuver its opponents in a complex, high-tech battle. So, you see the dilemma, right? The Pentagon's bean turners are looking at the massive price tags for both of these programs and getting nervous. They're asking, hey, if the new F-47 is so stealthy and smart, do we really need to spend billions more on a hypersonic spy plane? Why not just cancel the SR-72 and buy more 6th gen fighters? It seems like a logical question, but it might be a huge mistake. Here's where it gets interesting. Instead of seeing them as competitors for money, let's imagine them as partners, a team. Think of it like a superhero duo. The SR-72 Dark Star is the Flash, an unstoppable force that moves so fast you can't even process it's there. The F-47 is Batman, lurking in the shadows, using incredible gadgets and brilliant strategy to dismantle the enemy. Separately, they're amazing. Together, they're unbeatable. Picture this mission scenario. You need to take out a heavily defended enemy command center. Sending in a traditional strike package is risky. The enemy will see it coming from miles away. But what if you sent the Dark Star first? It screams into enemy airspace at Mach 6. Every air defense system in the country lights up, going into a panic trying to track this hypersonic ghost. They're all looking up, totally distracted by the blur that just ripped across their sky. But while all that chaos is happening, a squadron of F-47s, completely invisible to that same distracted radar network, slips in unnoticed from a different direction. The SR-72, with a human pilot making real-time decisions at the edge of space, uses its powerful sensors to pinpoint the highest priority targets and instantly shares that data with the F-47s. The stealth fighters guided by this perfect intelligence take out the targets with precision strikes and slip back out. The enemy never even knew what hit them. By the time they figure out the Dark Star was a decoy, the mission's already over. It's the perfect one-two punch. 
When you look at it that way, the debate isn't about speed versus stealth anymore. It's about how speed enables stealth. The Dark Star and the F-47 aren't redundant. They make each other better. One creates the opportunity, and the other exploits it. This combination creates a tactical problem that an adversary like Russia or China would have an incredibly hard time solving. And the idea of a manned Dark Star adds a whole other layer. A drone is one thing, but having a human pilot's brain capable of intuition and split-second problem-solving operating at hypersonic speeds? That's a paradigm shift. That pilot becomes the ultimate battlefield quarterback, seeing everything and directing the entire operation from the tip of the spear. So the real question for the Air Force isn't if they need this team up, but how fast they can make it happen. Because in the ongoing race for air superiority, the nation that masters this incredible combination of hypersonic speed and next-generation stealth won't just be leading the pack, they'll be writing the rules for the future of warfare.